during Alexander the Third of Scotland's reign. There lived in the Scottish borders a very wonderful man named Thomas Lemon. It is said that Thomas was an author of poetry and prophecies. He was well known by the name of Thomas the Rhymer because he wrote his prophecies in rhyme. And people also gave him the name of True Thomas for they say that he was not able to tell a lie no matter how much he wished to do so. Like other men of talent of the period, Thomas was suspected of magic. They say his talents were gifts from the Queen of Elfland, who took him away when he was young and kept him in Elfland for seven years. And this is how it all started. Young Thomas enjoys hunting and walking on the countryside. And one fine morning, he sat under an elden tree and by the stream of Huntley Burn. He heard the tinklings of little bells. He turned his head quickly to see where it was coming from. He saw the most beautiful lady he had ever seen, dressed in green, riding a white horse with all the finest fittings, along with halo of light shining all round her. She must be the Queen of Heaven, and Thomas said to himself. There, under the tree on the slope of the Elden Hills, a legend of King Arthur and his knights lie sleeping. Thomas took off his hat and kneeled before her, saying, O oh, hell, mighty Queen of Heaven, I have never before seen your equal. The fair lady replied, Ah, Thomas, that name does not belong to me. I am but the Queen of Fair Elfland, and have come to visit you. Fell under her spell, and Thomas leaned over to kiss the Queen. And with that, he is bound to suffer for seven years in the land of the elves. He mounted behind her, a white horse went swifter than a wind over water and hill. Thomas took a last glance of his beloved homeland before he vanished from his eyes. They rode on and on, until the queen said, Dismount, Thomas, I shall show you three wonders. Thomas saw three roads stretching before him. One of them was a narrow row full of thorns and briars, and that is a path of righteousness, said the queen. The second road was smooth and broad, and Thomas has been told that is a path of wickedness. Lastly, the road twines round the hillside towards the west. That is the way to Elfland, said the queen, and that's where we are going. And they continue the journey and come to a beautiful country. The horse then halted in the midst of a green garden. The queen plucked an apple and gave it to Thomas saying, this is my gift for you, and for it will give you a tongue that cannot lie, and from henceforth men shall call you True Thomas. Thomas did not like that at all, but took the apple and ate it, for he was so hungry after the long and tiring journey. When they arrived at the Queen's palace, Thomas being cloth with the finest green silk and shoes of velvet. He has been instructed not to speak or living there, or he'll be stuck in Elfland forever. Thomas lived among them for seven years. The time passed so quickly that the seven years seemed no longer than seven hours. 
I do not know if Thomas wished to stay longer, but some said the Queen would not extend it further because of the evil spirit who visits the land every seven years. And fear for Thomas' safety, she had to take Thomas back to the land of the men. They returned to the Elden Tree, and Thomas asked the Queen of the Elf for some token, and that would prove to people that he had really been in the Elfland. You already have the gift of truth, she replied, and I will add to that the gift of prophecy, and of writing wondrous verses, and here is a harp that was fashioned in Elfland. With his music, set to your own words, the world will know for certain that you learn the art from no earthly teacher. And someday, I will return. After Thomas returned, he make many songs and ballads and pronounce in rhyme many prophecies. From King Alexander III of Scotland's death in 1286 and Scottish victory in Battle of Bannockburn in 1314 and Robert of Bruce and Crown as King of Scotland and to the accession of James VI to the English throne and many more. He travelled up and down the country and whenever he went, he foretold events, some of which took place when he was alive, but others did not happen until long years afterwards. Some said there are still some prophecies which are yet to fulfil. It is said that the Queen of the Elfland returned for Thomas when he was an old man. Many knights and ladies bear witness as Thomas told them, Farewell, all of you. I shall return no more, then row off with the queen, and soon vanish before their eyes. Of course, the stories did not stop here. Some say Thomas often travelled here with a riding party from the Elfland during the wild hunt. Others told how he wanders far and wide through Scotland from the portals below Elden Hills and Dumbart Hills near Dumbarton and the one below the boat-shaped mouth at Inverness. Some say Thomas became immortal and still lives, gathering horses for the sleeping night at rest deep within the hollow hills. And some even said like Arthur, and true Thomas is sleeping somewhere in Scotland, waiting to wake at time of need. The legend of Thomas continues to inspire authors to this day. A novel such as *And Fire and Hemlock by Diana Wynne Jones, Nigel Tranter's novel True Thomas, along with a large number of other books, comics and paintings. Music based on the ballad, also recorded by several musicians. Lores and tales are often inspired by truth, later enhanced with fantasy, just like the many stories of Thomas. Or is it the other way round? I shall finish with a court from the Fellowship of the Rings by the great J.R. Tolkien. Farewell, and may the blessing of the elves and men and all free folk go with you, and may the stars shine upon your faces. <laughs>